Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome to my channel. If you are new to this channel, this channel is all about educational technology tools, tips and tricks. I try to upload two videos per month at least. So if you don't want to miss out on those tips and tricks, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Semester is almost coming to an end and you and me both know that this is the time educators focus solely on their grade book just so that the grades are accurate and they don't have to answer all those student emails. In this video, I will be showing you some tips and tricks on how to have your final grades accurately presented to your students. I will be covering how to deal with missing assignments, point versus percentages, gradebook settings, assignment groups, and weighted average. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Before I dive into point versus percentage, I highly recommend looking back in your syllabus and sticking to your syllabus. If your syllabus says point system, then please use point system. If your syllabus says weighted average or groups, then please use the percentage. Now that we clear that up, let's go ahead and take a look at point versus percentage. So here I am in my Canvas gradebook and this is a point system. The first question you might ask is, how do I know this is a point system? So let me quickly click on my assignments. And here in my assignments, I only have one group. So when you have all your assignments, tests, quizzes, discussions in one group, that means you are not weighing them and grouping them. That automatically becomes a point system. And when I click on it, as you can see, everything here is under one group. Now let's quickly go back to the gradebook. And here I have a test student who has eight or six points and the final grade is A. And if you look closely in the point system, all students have to do is simply add all the grades and divide by the total points. It is very easy for instructor and student to calculate. That is something that I like about the point system. But what I dislike is if you have an assignment that has more points and the test that has less points, your final grade is more skewed towards your assignment. What do I mean by that? If you look closely here, I have four different assignments and the test student has 90, 80, 80 in the assignments. And look at the test scores. The student has 40%, which is four out of 10. I can go ahead and change this to a percentage. So you can see I have 40% in test one, 40% in test two, click on these three ellipses, 40% in test three, and also 40% in test four. So even though the student has 40% in all the four tests, the student still has an A in the class. So again, it's up to instructor's discretion how they want to do it. But if you're using a point system, I highly recommend having equal number of points for every assignment so that your weight, uh, your final grade is not skewed. Now that we've seen point system, let's go ahead and jump into weighted groups or grouping your assignments. So to group your assignments, the first thing you have to do is to click on your assignments. And again, before you start grouping, I highly recommend sticking to your syllabus. My syllabus says assignments, quizzes, discussion, and projects. So let me go ahead and show you how to add a group. The first thing you wanna do is click on group. And here I'm going to make sure I have a group that says test. I'm gonna click save. I have another group in my syllabus that says quiz quizzes i have another group that says projects i have another group that says discussion once i've created all my groups now it's time to move my assignments into all these groups so the first thing i want to do is to go ahead and move my tests so the easiest way to do is i'm going to move this test all the way to the top da, da, da. just hold it drag it all the way to the top and here once it's all the way on the top, again, I'm going to click on my test, drag it, and drop it. Click, hold, drag, drop. Click, hold, drag, drop. So now my test group is done. Let me go ahead and do the same thing for my assignments, quizzes, and projects. I've completed moving my assignments by holding, dragging them into respective groups. As you can see, I have four tests. I have four assignments, four quizzes, one project, and one discussion. Now that we've seen how to group the assignments, the next step is to go ahead and add that weight to them. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and rearrange my groups. I like my tests to be on the top, and next my quizzes, and then my discussion, and all the way in the bottom is my projects. To move your groups, all you have to do is again, hold it, and drag, and leave it wherever you want but I want my projects all the way in the end. 
So once I have arranged them the way I want, now all the way to the right hand corner, click on these three ellipses and here you have assignment group weights. I don't know why Canvas put it all the way in there. But once you see this, let me move myself. All you have to do is click on weight and here I have all these different weights. Now let's go ahead and add the weights. In my class, the test is 50%. The quizzes are 15%. And the discussion is 10% and the projects are 10%. And all the way in the bottom, you will see your total. So just in case if this does not add up to 100%, that means you know your grading policy is slightly off the scale. So make sure you add up everything to 100%. Once you check and cross check your percentage based on your syllabus, let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's go back to our grading. Now that we have weighed our assignments, now let's go ahead and take a look on how to drop the lowest grades. I usually drop one test. I drop a couple of assignments, couple of quizzes, couple of discussions, just so that when students miss due to various reasons, they're not penalized for that. So here in my assignment groups, I have tests. I drop one test. So let me quickly go to my test group, click on these ellipses and click edit. And here I am going to go ahead and say number of lowest scores. I'm going to say ignore one lowest score and I'm going to click save. I'm going to my quizzes. I'm going to click on these three ellipses, edit number of lowest scores to ignore one. And I'm going to say save. And I'm going to my assignments. I'm going to click edit number of lowest scores one and save. Now in my projects, I only have one project, so I don't want to drop that. Now let's go to my discussions here. Here I want to show you how to not drop an assignment. Let me click on edit. I still want to drop one lowest grade, but here I have an interesting discussion for my discussion for, and I wanted all my students to participate, and I do not want Canvas to drop this grade, even though this is my lowest grade. So Canvas will not drop this grade. So you telling Canvas, drop the lowest grade, but please make sure you don't drop discussion four. So what Canvas does is that it will move on to the next lowest score instead of dropping discussion four, even though that is your lowest. Once it's done, let's go ahead and click save. Once all that's done, please make sure you cross check. Here I have all my groups, 50 plus 15 plus 15 plus 10 is 100 percent. And here I have a rule. When you hover over the rule, it will tell you what the rule is. It says drop lowest score, drop lowest score, drop lowest score. Here I have two rules. One is to drop the lowest score and never drop discussion four. And here I am on my final grade. As you can see, when I use the point system, my student got an A. When I use the percentage, my student got a D. So again, it totally depends on how you want in this particular example, I had more points to my assignments. That's why my student got an A. But now that I have more percentage to my tests instead of my assignments, my student now gets a D. And as you can see, student still has 40%, uh, student still has 80%. And it's very easy to change from point to percentage. All you have to do is click on these three ellipses and look at your grade as percentage. Now let's go ahead and look at a scenario where a student has a lot of grades missing in the grade book, but still the final grade is either A or B. Like example here, test student in my class has test four, test three, and tons of assignments missing. I like to color grade my statuses so I can see what assignments are missing so it makes my life much more easier. Again, if you want to know how to color grade this, I'll leave a link in the description box below on the tips and tricks for your Canvas gradebook. Now that we've seen that tons of these assignments, quizzes, and tests are missing, but surprisingly, the student still has a B in the class. To avoid such situations, the easiest way to do is to go all the way to the right, click on the setting tab, and make sure you check automatically apply zero grade to your missing assignments. You might have 100% in there, make sure you change it to zero. So any assignment that is missing in your gradebook will automatically be changed to a zero in the gradebook. So once you check this, make sure you click, I'm gonna move myself up here, apply settings, and then save. Once that's done, let me move myself back up here. All you have to do is refresh, 
And as you can see, once I refreshed the assignments that are missing or the tests or any quizzes, tests, assignments, or projects that are missing the grades have automatically been changed into a zero. And now the student has the accurate grade, which is an F in the class. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a scenario where you automatically update your missing grades to zero, but you go back to your grade book and you don't see a zero in your missing assignments. This does happen, like in the case here, I can tell that test three grades are missing, but I don't have a zero in there. The reason for this is either your test or your assignment or your quiz is linked externally, that you're using an external tool. It does happen to me periodically. I use Pearson and Newton, and when I update my missing grades to zero, sometimes they don't sink in. If this happens to you, I highly recommend quickly scanning all your grades and see if there are any missing grades. If they are, this is a quick tip. You will simply go to these three ellipses and you'll change the default grade to zero. By doing that, any assignment that doesn't have a grade will automatically change into a zero. So let me go ahead and click set default grade and I'm going to click zero here. And please make sure you are not checking this overwrite already entered grade. By doing this, you'll make all your grades zero. That's not what you want. You only want to change the missing grades to zero. So please make sure you don't check this and make sure you select default grade. And here I have a grade automatically changed to zero. Now I'm going to scan my grade book to see if there are any missing assignments, missing grades. And once I scan, I know this is the final grade of that particular student. After checking your missing assignments, weighing your assignment groups, dropping the lowest grade, the most important thing is making sure the student has the right grade. Now let's go ahead and take a look on how to edit or personalize your grading scheme. To do that, let me click on my course and all the way on the right hand side, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, click on settings. Scroll all the way down, make sure I enable grading scheme, set grading scheme, and here is the default grading scheme for your institution. And if you're like my institution, which don't do minuses, pluses, now let's go ahead and delete those. All I have to do is click on this little pen icon to edit, and I'm going to delete A minus. I'm going to just click a cross button, delete B plus, B minus, C plus. Let me clear up all the pluses and minuses and be right back. So as you can see, I've cleaned up all the pluses and minuses and my grading system is 89.5 is an A and 79.5 is a B, I round up. And this is 69.5 and 59.5. And once that's done, let's go ahead and save it. And here is my personalized grading scheme for my class. Close and please, please make sure you click on, let me move myself up here, update course details, because after you do all of that and you don't update, no point, right? I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you learn how to deal with missing assignment, change your grading scheme, difference between point and percentages, drop, not drop your lowest grade, weigh your assignments and much more. If you did, please make sure you like and subscribe. If you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so because I know there are educators who are dreading about their final grades. Do you know we now have a Facebook page where you can connect with me and exchange educational thoughts? I will leave a link in the description box below for Microsoft Teams, Canvas, and technology playlist. Please do check them out. And do not forget to comment in the comment section below what you like and dislike about this video. Did you take time to answer my poll? If you did, a big thank you to you. And like always, happy teaching and please take care of yourself. Oh wait, happy grading! Assignments, your assignment, your grade. I hope you learn how to deal with missing assignments. And I forgot, missing words. Semester is almost over and this is the time where educators focus on next semester. Let's focus solely on Christmas break. Bless you. Bless you.